Tiger's mission was to deliver a shipment of quinine to the natives of Beku in preparation for their annual epidemic of malaria. About a mile out of port, we began to run into some difficulties. We're listening to port. Chief! Keep your eye on that gauge. What? Why are we listening? Now, taking water through the port ballast tank in order to stabilize. Once we get enough pressure, I'll blow both ballast tanks and we'll surface. Good. I don't believe in indiscriminate sinking. Now, there's a man with a healthy attitude. What are you doing? I'm watching the gauge. Not the temperature gauge. You're supposed to be watching the pressure gauge. You, you didn't tell me the pressure gauge. I, 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 I did. Ten minutes ago, wasn't I having trouble with the pressure gauge? Well, yeah, but... Then why are you watching the temperature gauge when you're supposed to be watching the pressure gauge? Well, you, you don't have to yell at me, Chief. Oh, you call this yelling? Well, this is whispering. Now, I suppose you think I'm yelling, but this is talking. Hey, you know what I'm doing now? What? Not listening. You stupid... <laughs> Cup of coffee, Lieutenant? Thank you, Yeoman Uncle. Someone's coming. Uh, thank you for the medical advice, Lieutenant. Quite all right. <laughs> Letter from home? Mother. How is she? Oh, in rare form. Thank you. Listen to this. Kenny Swofford, one of the last of the few remaining webs on my list, is apparently tying the knot. Web? Wealthy, eligible bachelor. <laughs> Mother says that Kenny Swofford is biting the dust. I say he's biting Lucy Rutterman. <laughs> did you like him? Yes, I did. to blow my ballast tanks. I know you do, but I can't overload my electrical system. Well, you better hurry up about it, or else you're going to be having a conversation with a flounder. <laughs> hello there. Why are we listing? Huh. I say hello there, and she says, why are we listing? All right, I'll say hello there. Well, that's better. Now, why are we listing? We're probably going around a corner. <laughs> Mike, would you please be serious? Something's wrong. I can feel it in my bones. Really? You want to know what I can feel in my bones? Mm. I'm terrified, and he's chewing on my neck. <laughs> Betty, now listen to me. If there were anything wrong, aside from the captain, I would be the first to know, OK? Now, put one right there. You can just use one lip if you want. Huh? Mr. Bender, report to the control room. On the double. <laughs> Save my place. Sounds like you're better off without him. Besides, Catherine, there are plenty of fish in the sea. Name one. Uh, Captain Haller. Captain Haller? And me? We have absolutely nothing in common. Opposites attract. Eleanor Roosevelt and Joe Lewis are opposites. Need I say more? I think Captain Heller's nice. As a captain, he's fine. But as a man, he's rude, opinionated, gruff, and he smokes the most obnoxious cigars. I think he's nice. <laughs> We're not listing anymore. You're right, Bender. We're not listing. We're sinking. Feels like submerging to me. No. Submerging is when you want it to be. Switch to the emergency backup system. Anjanini, what was that all about? 
The strain of trying to build up air pressure just knocked out the primary electrical system. Can we blow the tanks with a backup system? I don't know, sir. I never tried. Try. I don't know why I'm turning this. The only place we're going is down. We can't use the radio to send a message for help. That's right. The radio doesn't transmit underwater. Stupid submarine manufacturers building a, a submarine radio that doesn't transmit underwater. I mean, isn't that idiotic? Knock it off, Bender. Manginini, how are we doing? I was just about ready to give it a shot, sir. Mr. Dobridge. Speaking. Now, when I say go, you hit the switches. Right. This is the captain speaking. We've lost our primary electrical system. And we're attempting to blow the tanks with a backup. At this moment, Chief Dobridge and Chief Manginini are doing everything they can to enable the Sea Tiger to resurface. if you have plans for the future. What's it read, Broom? 280 feet and still sinking. Sinking. <laughs> Sir, where do you suppose we are? What do I look like? Travel agent. <laughs> what was our last heading, Broom? We were heading straight out away from port at a heading of 160 degrees, sir. Yes, and when the power ran out, the sonar showed us to be directly above the Kaloa shelf, sir. About 300 feet underwater, stuck in the sand. We got less than five hours of air left. Sir, if we have everybody breathe out of one nostril, like, uh, you know, maybe we could stretch it out to 10 hours. <laughs> Bender. Sorry, sir. I get giddy when I'm faced with death. Knock it off. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, yeah. Bender, I snapped at you. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, that's no problem. I mean, this is your basic snapping situation. If a man can't snap in a situation like this, he's dead. <laughs> Figure speech. Poor choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Well, in Sunday school, they taught us that there were only two places to go. You either go to heaven... No, or no, 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 no. I meant, we're going now. Oh, now? Now I'm going into my room, have a good cry, practice lying in state. <laughs> Ender, now stop the morbid talk about death. No, it's not good for you, it's not good for the crew, and it's not good for me. We still have five hours. Now, plenty can happen. And... Nobody panics. You got it? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, we're going to go to the maneuvering room. Meanwhile... Now, Uncle, I want you to keep tapping this. Maybe somebody will hear us. All right? Now, you okay? Hi, ah, yes, sir. Okay, come on. Absolutely. No way to get power. Not without new parts. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. We're a mile away from Kaloa, right? Right. Okay. We put somebody in the torpedo tube. Fire them out. They swim to the top and then swim on to Kaloa. Can't work, huh? Sure, in the movies, the pressure would kill you. It's just a thought. 
That's okay. That's okay. It was a nice try. You guys get any brainstorms, don't be shy. Yeah, stay in touch. <laughs> You know something, Manginini? This whole experience may be a blessing in disguise. What are you talking about? Well, we both got to lose some weight, huh? Now it's a good chance. Yeah, I just don't want to lose all of it. <laughs> <laughs> all of it. <laughs> That's funny. Control room. I mean, since we have a little time now. Well, now I I I, I got to do this. Well, you promised you'd show me how the sonar works. Well, this isn't a very good time for that. Why? It, it isn't working. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to do something else then. What did you have in mind? That was good for a number of reasons. One, it was wonderful. Two, kissing doesn't use up oxygen. <laughs> Three, it was wonderful. Alvin. What? Let's get married. What? Where? Now, here. The captain. He can do it. Dolores, you're an officer and I'm an enlisted man. We're not allowed to fraternize, let alone get married. Sure, we can get around it. Sure, we can get around it. Sure. What are you doing, Warner? Well, it was my turn to swab the conning tower. Then I figured, what the heck? It doesn't make any difference anymore. Are you kidding me? Warner, mark my words. When we're rescued, the first thing that's gonna happen is some officer's gonna climb down into the conning tower. He's gonna take one look around, he's gonna see a filthy deck. And he's gonna wanna know why it wasn't swapped. And all fingers are gonna be pointed towards you. Now, if I were you, I'd get a move on fast. Yes, sir. not supposed to do this, Warner. What the heck? You only live once. What do you got for a headache brought on by that old uh, sinking feeling? Aspen. Huh? I'll get you some. You think you're the only one on board who knows poetry, huh? Listen to this. A primal termite knocked on wood, found it tasted very good. And that is why your cousin May fell through the parlor floor today. <laughs> <laughs> who wrote that? Ogden Nash. Sit down. Put your head forward and just relax. <clears throat> oh. The air is starting to smell funny, isn't it? Yeah. Anybody ever tell you you picked the right profession, Lieutenant? Catherine. Okay. Sam. You know, Catherine, there's a certain way I behave because I'm captain of this boat. You mean like being rude, opinionated, and gruff? Well, 
in that general area. But... Well, I always felt, well, even if you've never expressed it, that you know that I'm not completely like that. But there's a little more to me than that. I know that. Hmm. That feels good. Oh, you mind if I smoke? No, go ahead. I got angry before. That's my fault. Something just came over me. I, I couldn't control myself. I don't remember that ever happening before. I said it was my fault. I mean, it just isn't like me to act that way. I'm not that kind of person. Okay, I forgive you. Thanks, Chief. Hmm. What time have you got? 5.15. A lot of time to find out you're slow. You know, I was up there trying to think of the medical name of what they call it when you run out of air to breathe. Do you know what it is? Death. No, that's not it. You want to bet? Oh, boy. 23 years in the Navy. What a way to go. Stuck in the sand like a crab. We're not stuck in the sand. <laughs> what is right? We're not on the Kolova Bay shelf. We're perched on a reef. Now, does this mean we get to live? Maybe. We landed just beyond the shelf on a formation of reefs. I've just seen it through the periscope. Now, wait a minute. Why is it different to be stuck on a reef than, say, stuck in sand? Because we can tip ourselves off a reef and give ourselves enough motion to turn back toward Kaloa. So we're pointed towards Kaloa. And we send Kaloa a message. The radio's out. I know that. Sir, Lieutenant Crandall and I have decided to get married. Sir. Not now. Bender. I want you to spread the word that in 15 minutes, I want every available man and woman in the forward torpedo room. Yes, sir. I still don't get it. Because we love each other. <laughs> Step right in. Good to see you, boys. Step all the way to the back of the boat. Step right in. Now, when you feel us begin to slide off the reef, I want you to make the sharpest turn to starboard you ever made in your life. Hi, right, sir. Feature film starts in one minute. It's called Try to Save Your Life. <laughs> Very hilarious. All right, slip the fish in the tube. New beautiful pink tub tip. Nothing seems to be happening. Come on, everybody, jump up and down. Simon says, jump up and down. Jump, will you? Come on, jump, go, jump. jump.
if that torpedo doesn't hit Kaloa. Frankly, Bender, I don't think God would do that to us now. <laughs> when we get back, the maneuvering room needs a complete overhaul. Sam! Captain, um, I just thought you might enjoy reading this book of Dorothy Parker poetry. It's, uh, <coughs> it's really very, very good. Oh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant. If the smoke bothers you, I'll put it out. No, no, no. He loved it, right? Right. I love it. I really love it. Let me tell you something, Bender. This little lady is not your average frilly type. She is solid and tough under pressure, right, Catherine? Right, Sam. Bet your life. But, as I always say... I know. A woman is only a woman, but a good cigar is a smoke. <laughs> Captain. 